No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not doing it. Alexa, start that song again. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not even gonna let shenanigans. Alexa, start this song from the beginning. Uh, Alexa, play this song from the beginning. Says who? Travis said loud and clear, son. That's because I'm clear now. Wait, wait. <laughs> then I gotta show it again. <laughs> I know you already saw it, but you didn't hear it. <laughs> it it's for barbecue. A Raiders! Whoop, whoop. <laughs> the little mama bear. Yes, also, Tante Oso, that bear you all know, out of hibernation to entertain Raider Nation. What? You heard me, because I've got a new mic. The only reason why there was no sound for a second there was because I still had the mute button. <laughs> it's a new microphone, okay? Give me a break. Not like you had it a hundred other times. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! A hop in imitated, never duplicated. <laughs> that fool with no hair that shouts like Ric Flair. The Raider Bear. The Raider. Okay, everyone has a superpower. Now you've seen mine. Yeah, no, the voice is bionic. I'm serious. This isn't even on. <laughs> you can just hear me where you're at. I'm playing. Alexa, shut your mouth. Me and her have a thing now. I can almost say anything. It's just, <laughs> and she just gets me. Tradish. A Raider Bear Live first comment. Woo! MVP tonight goes to on YouTube. Mark Bargas upsetting our world heavyweight champion. Yeah, that's right, Jimmy. <laughs> I know you only go by Jim, so that's just funny to me. All right, Jimmy. Now, Mark Vargas, congratulations, our gold medalist tonight, upsetting our world champion, because I intentionally posted the show before he got off work. <laughs> a lot of good it did me, it only pushed you a second. <laughs> the silver medal, the world heavyweight champion, Jim Vendelin! I know that was one of my better calls for your name i felt like i owed you a big one on that one because you know so much shenanigans tonight you know third place my bronze medal tonight goes to john the lion leon who i like to say is often taking l's but never posting losses yeah <laughs> it's his name you know it goes with the l thing all right, Facebook. What's up, Facebook? Love you guys. Welcome to the show. First place, my bronze, my gold. How is bronze first place? My gold medal <laughs> goes to a man who has been dominating around here lately. I may have to start getting used to long term. A new heavyweight champion of the world. Dustin King! You know, DK's the champ now. I can feel Josh Russell stalking around somewhere in the shadows. I don't know. I don't know if he's lifting weights and getting ready for you. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into him lately. Second place, my silver medal, one of my favorite people. Lucky Pace! 
What's up, Lucky? Welcome to the show. Always there for Raider Bear. And you know, honestly, Lucky, I consider myself at most times when I'm discussing things to be razor sharp. So when you catch me in something wrong, point it out every time. I have people that don't do it because they think I'm going to get upset or something. Especially with you, I'd never get upset. Respect the brains, bro. Much respect. Third place, my bronze medal goes to, and you've heard me say in the past, that bronze medal is just like a gold. It just looks like it's been out in the sun all day. It's got a sexy tan. So don't take it out on the beach with you, unless you're single. <laughs> I know, I wrote that. Seriously. Travis Kelly! What's up, Kay? Welcome to the show. Always there for Raider Bear. You know, when your last name starts with a K, and you get that nickname Special K, that goes way back to the 80s. There was a breakdancing movie that I believe was actually called Breakdancing. <laughs> Showing my age. And it had a girl in it that was called Special K, and she was not hot. Don't don't start this argument with me again. <laughs> no. It's not, no. No. She's not. No. Okay? You can't butch your hair. It wasn't like it was, you know, like at her ears. It's above her ears. I mean, you know, does she have butterface? Sure. I know that was terrible. Tommy, don't ever use that. <laughs> don't. You're going to get me in trouble with mommy. Don't ever use that. Okay. So what's up, everyone? Welcome to the G. You know what? I pull out my headphones, and it's like I... I I bumped it. Every uh, this this microphone, this microphone's really sensitive, babe. If I like just touch this wire down here, it's like it 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 wants to shut down, and then it it was defaulting me to mute. Okay, well, yeah. And I know it's fine now. I, I I didn't even see it. I uh, guys, I apologize. This is really this is just me getting new, used to a new microphone. But it's so it's so see the cable right here. It's so tight. We gotta we're gonna have to move this over to the other side so it's not yeah. But we could do that tomorrow. We can do that. We can do that tomorrow. We're going to do it all tomorrow. No, just kidding. You look <laughs> um, I need something like, you see that over there? That's like cloth. I can use that. Other than that, I don't know what else is in here that can, I can use because that camera's so nice and I don't want to. Yeah, just that shirt, anything. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this is a ghetto show. You know me. I don't, I don't do it like that. I don't care. I Hey, look, I could be on ESPN, CBS. I'd still be doing this. Later. What? Wait a minute. What was that? You know, this is a family show. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I did show him that. My meat's going to 100% be in your face, okay? It's true. And I, you know, I cook. Mm. Those who have been patient with the show and contribute stars to the show, like Tony Make a Dip, and I'm sure Corinna Trejo, because she always supports my show, and Andy has been caught, and Tony, um, a lot of people. <laughs> Check this out. I was going to do this on my show the other night. I didn't get a chance because my show went haywire. But I have these. I only have this pair right now. But I do, I just want to be clear, I do actually have another pair coming in. I just have to wait for them. I thought they were going to both show up at the same time, but they didn't. Anyway, um, I got these sweet earbuds 
for the Raiders. They're officially NFL endorsed. I'm sure you can see. Uh, they're really nice. I've actually used a pair myself, and uh, they're pretty handy. Uh, they're pretty handy. They have that noise canceling uh, sort of uh, thing to them, where when you wear them, you can hear like nothing around you. It's pretty cool. All right. And so those will go to the contributor of the most stars tonight. And Dustin K. All right, we're going to get to football because I'm talking too much. <laughs> Ellis Irving, what's up? Welcome to the show. We won't have any more sound problems, I promise. I'm doing real good, Ellis. I got a brand new microphone I'm still kind of playing with. Denton Rhodes, what's up? Welcome to the show. But uh, I'm getting it right, Ellis. I'm getting it right. Love the profile picture. Uh, Yo, Bear, does the Telesco trading for Dak Prescott have any uh, merit or steam behind it? And do you think if it happens, we can make a run this year? Okay, so first things first. Um, Travis Kelly, oh, wait, let me put your comment up there so everybody can see it. Okay, first things first. Tom Telesco trading for Dak Prescott's not happening. I, I don't I, I don't know um, why they do this every year because they seem to let a lot of guys get away with it. But it would be no different than if I had said the Raiders are absolutely going to trade for, you know, uh, the kid that Kirk Cousins that was playing for Minnesota. OK, and then he ends up going to Atlanta and I can just go, oh, sorry. You know, I didn't realize mistake on my part. And that's what they end up doing. That it, It's just it's to create uh, interest in their website and their story. That's it. They have deadlines. They have to create stories, just like I do. I'm doing a show tonight. It's the off season. What are we going to talk about? We're going to just talk about the draft? No. I have to give you more than that, and that's my job. And I enjoy doing that. I point out to people often that I'm better than most at that. <laughs> the Raider Man. All right. All right. So, you know, it's just because I enjoy doing it. I like going out there. I like finding the story in the story. And I have a little bit of that tonight. The Raiders are quietly concerned <coughs> about two positions on the team that I think might surprise you guys. One, wide receiver. Now, obviously, once you get past Devontae Adams, you don't have you know these world beaters uh, on the rest of our roster. You have some guys that are good. But, um, again, not world beaters. That's why the whole Brandon Ayuk, for those of you who don't recognize that name, that's the star wide receiver for the Santa Clara 49ers. Figure out where you are, guys. It's not that hard. It's called a map. It's embarrassing. But um, a guy like Brandon Ayuk was being rumored to coming to the Raiders because, you know, they just feel like if we can take one guy, even if he's not as good as Devontae Adams, if we can just tandem a guy, just someone that's above a nobody, you know, someone that's a genuine two that can just make a few plays to where now he 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 can legitimately make the defense pay attention to him so we can get Devontae into some motion sometimes where he's facing one or just two because he faces triple coverage sometimes, guys. You got a cornerback that originally will pick him up at the snap. Then he'll release him sometimes if he's going across the middle to a linebacker. And then the linebacker will release him to the safety. So in effect, he's being covered by three separate guys on the defense. So I think they want to do something with that. And then also with the running game, which I was kind of surprised by, but not so much when we know, when we know what Zamir White is. We know what, what Zamir White is. You know what I mean? He's he's a handy running back. He's young. He's tough. Um, he, he's got it all. He's got decent speed. You know, he's not a blur, but he's fast enough that you can't call him slow. So he he's a fast runner. He can bang. He's everything Josh Jacobs was for us. Younger, l way less expensive. But more importantly, can his legs hold up to being a bell cow back? Now, I, I think this is another article slash argument that a reporter is bringing up just to create interest interest in a topic because I don't feel like that's the direction the Raiders are going to go in just like I have to answer the Dak question I'm answering this question so as far as Zamir White I think they believe in Zamir White I just think that you notice we signed that other kid Madison because he he looks like a raw dog man I mean that guy is going to come in and he's going to push Zamir White to understand yes you're the heir apparent Yes, you're on the cheap, and we've got you on your rookie deal still for a year or two, but this cat we just brought in from the Vikings is hard. He hard. I got him run, man, and so I, I'd like to see him get, get snaps. I think he's going to, if for nothing else, just to keep um, Zamir White healthy and, and try, to, try to avoid that hit or that play that maybe takes him out for a few weeks 
because he, you know, tightens his Achilles, which is, you know, always the sign that bad things are coming. Denton Rhodes, what's up, man? Welcome to the show. Benny Ariaga, I see you there. Karina, as usual. Karina, true, hello. And Tommy, I'm wrapping up your stuff, your flag, and, and I'm sending you some other stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm wrapping up your flag and some other stuff that Corinna uh, gifted to you, and I'll be sending that soon. Hi, Ray, uh, Steeler Val. I'm glad you saw that or heard me say that. <laughs> That's what this is supposed to do, okay, Tommy? It's supposed to make adults especially laugh out loud. Okay, now getting back to Dak Prescott. The Dak Prescott thing to me is stupid. Now, your average everyday Raider fan is going to say, no, we don't want Dak Prescott because you've seen how Dak Prescott has played. But I would argue with you that uh, how Dak Prescott has played is in part to do with, remember, he had one of the greatest rookie seasons by a quarterback ever. I think he went, what, what was it? I think 12-0 and 0 to start. Something like that, 11-0, and 0, and uh, like one of the greatest rookie starts of a career ever. Now, obviously, a lot of that is because people didn't know who he was. You didn't have tape to study on what he does on third down. What are his tendencies with the ball? Does he tap it before he throws? Does he bring it low? Does he bring it high? Two hands on the ball, one hand. So you had to do all this study on him. You didn't have any of that his rookie season. So he got away with a lot of things and had a great year. Then he slowly, by in my opinion, year by year by year, regressed. Uh, part of that was Ezekiel Elliott's running game began to also regress almost at the same time. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but him and Dak almost, it was like they were just almost at the same time. I know that they're but like best friends, but you don't got to do everything together. <laughs> Ezekiel, let him do that on his own. You know, Dak, let him go fail on his own. Chris Strong, what's up? Welcome to the show. Now, but the argument, though, is that a, another man's Volkswagen is another man's Ferrari. In other words, there's going to be a team with a coach that thinks if I got a hold of Dak and I limited his decisions, in other words, I'm not going to make him put the ball in the air too much. I'm going to utilize this running game with Madison and forgive me if I'm saying his name wrong because I'm going off memory, but the kid, the running back we brought in from the Vikings plus white mixed in with some high percentage throws, screens, slants, you know, get him loose. And then here and there you look for the, you know, the strike to Devontae Adams. Not just to get him yards, but to get him touchdowns. You know, keep that, that career on the Hall of Fame pace it's on. Now, um, in the past, you always thought um, as fans and as a team, no one's more important than the team. In this instance... Devontae Adams is a legitimate weapon you can win football games with. So to me, like in the past, when we were forcing the ball to him with Derek Carr, I was like, you know, and? I mean, <laughs> you want to win, don't you? You know, that, it's kind of what you do with your best player. Now, granted, I, don't get me wrong. I know, obviously, there, there are times where if you try to do, you know, all that with him, you're not going to win because you're not getting enough diversity in your offense. There's always going to be downs where he may not catch the ball or may not get the yards you thought he might. And then, you know, you have to factor that in. So if, if I throw the ball to him 17 times, it doesn't guarantee you're going to win the game. It just guarantees he's going to have some pretty good stats. As far as Dak, I don't think Dak's an answer. I just don't think Dak's an answer. Dak, Dak is one of those guys that they're going to wonder if he's better. They're going to wonder if with the right coach, under the right system and circumstances, could he work? I would argue, honestly, that you, you could make that argument with almost any quarterback that makes it to the NFL level. When you make it to the NFL level, you are an NFL level quarterback. You can't make it. It's just the 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 level of difficulty for quarterbacks going into the league now is just so high. You know what I mean? You you got what two thousand quarterbacks every year coming out saying, "Hey, I can make it," and three hundred get picked, if that. You know what I mean? So okay, moving forward. <laughs> Mama Bear <laughs> Mama Bear is trying to seduce the host of this show And it's working Nicholas Maida, what's up brother, welcome to the show Carlos, always there for Raider Bear How you doing Carlos? Matt Michaud, how you doing man, welcome to the show Okay Matt, no, never howdy The Raider Bear, I do not howdy Okay 
<laughs> no, no. I barely tell me something good with Wilts Duncan. He thought I missed his comment. I, I didn't miss it. I was just saving it for the right moment. What's up, Wilts? Welcome to the show. <laughs> no, my medal round is not fixed, Glenn Medina. It's just my medal winners are aggressive. Mark Vargas, you picked up a crab tree. A crab tree. Okay, that's a cool jersey. I am a mess, Mama Bear. Uh, greetings, Raider Bear. I had a stressful day in the snake pit, and I'm very happy to be here with Val and Tommy and the brandy that was waiting for me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good to hear. Michael Purifoy, what's up, brother? Welcome to the show. Kind of weird that Cowboy pages are popping up on my feed talking about trading Prescott to the Raiders. I'm used to seeing that kind of nonsense on Raider pages, but not from Cowboy pages. Does this validate that there may be same, some truth to this rumor? Michael, great question as always. Let me post that and so everybody can read it again if they want to know what we're discussing here for a moment. Uh, good to see you, brother. Uh, I would say this to you. No, um, I think that... I think that if if Jerry Jones, if you pay attention to what he does, Jerry Jones is the kind of guy that he will either re-sign a guy, but if he doesn't really want to re-sign him, he will try to get another team to overpay to justify him then moving on from that guy. So if he can get some team to give him a first rounder or two, you know, maybe a first rounder this year, first rounder next year, uh, a third rounder this year, a fourth rounder next year, and then they'll say like a seven and a something or other ridiculous. But it'll be high, and um, and it sucks. But we're not in that in the sweepstakes for Dak Prescott, to my knowledge, anyway. Now, could this have been started from us reaching out to find out if there was, you know, a deal to be made? Of course, you know. What I mean, it would be it wouldn't be good business for. Um, Tom Telesco to just eh, not even take a flyer on what's going on with Dak Prescott. Now, do we think that? Of course, we think that because we know Dak Prescott, we've seen his career. But again, you have to remember, new coaches, different teams always feel like if that guy was ever a star, I can put him in my system and make it work. There's always guys that think that. Uh, in fact, I would even argue to you, if, if you had sent, let's say... Let's say Patrick Mahones broke one of his legs, which I often have dreams about. I <laughs> Don't judge me. But if he ever broke his leg and was just out for a couple years and the Chiefs made a move and got Dak Prescott, I, I would be concerned. I honestly would. Because I feel like a, 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 guy like a guy like Dak would go to a guy like Andy Reid and Andy Reid would fix him. He really would. And when I say fix him, I mean just, he would just limit his mistakes. You know what I mean? Instead of asking him to throw the ball 50 times, he would ask him to throw it maybe 25, 35 times. Tops. And I'm talking low end of that. It would probably be more like 25, 29, you know, 31, that kind of thing, but never beyond that. You know what I mean? And, and, they, and he would win with it. He would win with it. I just don't think we can do that. Jesse Parker, what's up, brother? Welcome to the show. Matt Marinas, what do you think of getting Dalton Reisner? Um, high completion percentage, if I'm not mistaken. It's a quarterback, isn't that? I don't want to say that, and I'm, and I'm mixing up my names. Hold on, let me double check my... Uh, close that, go like this. Here we go. Dalton Reisner. I just got to make sure I have my people right in my mind, because you're telling me to... Okay, here we go. Oh, oh guard! Oh, okay, no, yeah, see, I'm way off. Okay, yeah, 28 years old. Okay. Oh, he's a big boy. Okay, experience with the Vikings. That means he's been around a winner, too. Um, a passing offense. I, I like that. Especially at his age. 28's your prime. 28 to 35, you're kind of, you're peaking as a football player. So he would be a nice pickup right now. Purdue is getting their <clears throat> kicked. I like that center for Purdue, to, Purdue, though. They just don't have as complete a team. Uh, we got that running back, Madison. Who should be a good number two back? Well, Matt, it's going to be Zamir White. Zamir White and Madison are going to fight for that position. But regardless of who wins it, I, I would argue it's going to be starter in name only because Madison is going to get snaps. That's just a fact. So whether they give it to Zamir or not because he's still young and they don't want to 
you know, demotivate him, you know what I mean, and, 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 and discourage him, you know what I mean? And so they may give him the name of starting running back, running back and title only, give him 12 snaps and then pull him off the field and then start mixing and matching him with Madison. Uh, all the rumors are that the Raiders are going to trade up. Troy, uh, it's because Tom Telesco, our new general manager, has 11 drafts in his history, never drafts down, and he always either drafts where he's at or he moves up. Now, um, we have, for the first time in a long time, an aggressive general manager. Now, a general manager is not unlike a coach. When they come in, they want to pick their quarterback. And AOC, no matter how much potential we may see in him, including myself, um, a GM doesn't care about potential. He wants his guy. He wants to ride on the back of his pick, not another GM's pick, especially if you decide to ride with AOC and he doesn't work out. Then you feel dumb when you could have pulled the trigger on who you feel could be the future of the Raiders moving forward. Now, having said that, um, the... The Spencer Radler argument is starting to ratchet up more and more. Now, I don't think that that's the pick because I do think we're going to go offensive line. If you've looked at, and I have, uh, Tom Telesco's patterns um, in his last 11 drafts, he focused the majority of them on offensive linemen and trying to rebuild the offensive line. Now, that's a good sign if you're a fan like me who wants you know, a GM who understands that football games aren't won unless your big man win their matchups, both sides of the ball. Now, the defensive line, we're, we're, I feel like we're pretty solid. In other words, I've heard some people say, yeah, we should go after now this defensive end or this defensive tackle, the guy from Texas. I don't know, guys. If, if we didn't pick anyone on the defensive line, I, I'd be kind of okay. In other words, if we if we went with another cornerback, because we know we need a cornerback, there's been a lot of rumors about Terry and Arnold. I happen to like Terry and Arnold. So if we went with Terry and Arnold, then you got Jack Jones on the other side. Then you got Nate Hobbs. You know what I mean? You 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 know you're you know Mark Epps. You know you're starting to make some things happen now in that secondary with one pick. If that pick pans out. And don't forget about Jacorion Bennett. And Jacorion Bennett is not going to just give up on the job, you know, because we bring in Terry and Arnold. So best believe we've got some young talent, very high pedigree. We've got some experience at safety. There's some things happening on this defense. We all saw it happen like that. Our defense was a laughing stock. Suddenly we got a player here. We picked up a Jack Jones. Suddenly Antonio Pierce goes over to our general manager, I mean, excuse me, our defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham, and says, hey, man, we, we need to tweak this a little bit, tweak that a little bit. I need you to be a little bit more aggressive, and don't worry about your job, man. I, I'm trying to keep my job, and I'm going to do it with your help. And it's like, whoa, let's go. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm only saying I heard that that was part of it. That's not word for word what was said, but there was a little bit of a pep talk between AP and Patrick Graham, and then we saw stuff happen, okay? Other teams' butts hit the ground fast, faster than they would have liked. So, fast forward, if we now make moves on the offensive line and they pan out and Colton Miller stays healthy, all bets are off, guys. This team could go to a Super Bowl. Did he just say the S word? I did. I did. And I'm not even talking about Dak. F Dak. You know what I mean? If, if we do what I think we're going to do, I think we're going to be okay. Now, as far as as far as far the Spencer Rattler thing, I, I don't really have a problem with that. But at the same time, there are guys in this. I'll kind of profile this more tomorrow night because I, I don't really have the time because there's other things I want to go on to as well. Uh, for example, Sean Paul Doney is bringing up uh, Bo Nix. Let me go ahead and go down to him, and let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, I heard we were looking into Bo Nix for the draft, figured we would go O-line. Now, Sean Paul Doney, appreciate you, um, you. You're figuring right. Remember, all of this is talk until we get to the 25th. And I would say to you, honestly, I, I think we're going to go offensive linemen. I, I really do. Um, I think Tom Telesco could move up. I think that he could pick at 13 and still get a good quarterback. You know, there's Everyone is screaming that Michael Penix is going to make it to 13. I, I know. I, I think it's crazy. I think that's absolutely crazy. I think some team at 8, 9, or 10, whoever it may be, I don't remember off of my top of my head, but whoever it may be 
if they see Sean Paul, I mean, if they Sean Paul, if they see a guy like that at 10, 11, or 12, how do you not? How do you not pick up your bad team? I, I mean, I, I just think it's going to happen. Now, if Michael Penix is sitting there, I think they're going to pull the trigger. And I think they should. I think that that's real competition in your quarterback room. You have him on a rookie quarterback deal. So if he doesn't win the starting job, so what? You're paying him peanuts. And you you know, you know have him for the next two, three years. Now, obviously, he's got a four-year deal. But by three years, you know if the guy is going to be the guy you want or not. And you're either going to let him go or, or not. Uh, I'm confused. When you were talking about another receiver besides Adams, that would be decent. Doesn't Jacoby Myers fill that fill that role? Um, J- Jim, he does. But at the same time, once you get beyond him, in other words, we can't assume that he's going to go out on the field and not get hurt and produce what he did the, the year prior because he's not a star. So what's going to happen is now the guys have tape on him, now that they've seen that, he's pretty effective. There were a couple bombs uh, AOC threw to him where he had to really sell out and lay out and do that diving into a pool kind of position, grab the ball, basket catch you know, style coming over your helmet, which is as hard as it gets. So hard degree of difficulty because it's a basket catch. Hard degree of difficulty because the defense was all over him. And hard degree of difficulty because the ball was inches off the ground when he caught it. And yet, he made it all happen. So he showed the ability of a star. So defenses now are going to say, we need to lock down Devontae Adams and this kid. We're going to have to start rotating our safeties to one side or the other and try to confuse them because that guy's legit. And he is. I, I, I honestly think that when they talk about our wide receiver room and they say we need more, I think that that's just... A wealth of riches. In other words, they're saying no matter how good the team may be, you're always trying to improve right until that last day when teams start snapping balls and the season starts. If we could get one more just decent wide receiver, I'd be on board with that. It would have to be a late round pick though or a trade or a free agent. And Sean Paul Doney, as far as Bo Nix, I kind of wanted to go into the Bo Nix thing because Spencer Rattler, Bo Nix, I would argue that they're both game managers. They're Alex Smith. And so we have to take a deep breath, calm down, and ask ourselves, do you want to use a first-round pick on a guy like that? We just got rid of nine years of a guy like that. See, I know I'm scaring some of you right now because you're saying, oh, well, then what the hell do we do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We should go offensive line. I personally think we should go offensive line. If you want to get a quarterback, you can go get a quarterback. There's quarterbacks in this draft. But I don't think that we should de- be dependent and say, well, you know, I'm going to give a first-round pick and go with 13 overall to a guy in Bo Nix who no one thinks should get that high a pick or that kind of money. I'm just, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Even if it means you risk, you know, how much you're going to win next season. I would rather go into next season with another quarterback that we find in the draft that's just respectable, that's a good player, that's a second or third round pick. Give him a chance to develop in the program with the Raiders. Maybe in year two or three, he maybe blossoms and shows us something in year two. And then in year three, is ready to be a starter. Who knows? You know what I mean? But... I don't believe in overpaying for quarterbacks. I don't know if uh, if this is the year we should even be looking at that. I think we have a fantastic defense. I think you run the ball and you go with a veteran quarterback. And I don't care which one it is. And by the way, AOC is a veteran now. He's already out of his rookie season. So if he goes out there and he wins and he plays well and the preseason comes and he shows a command of the offense, get out of the guy's way. You know what I mean? And, I, and, and enough about, you know, he can't run. So what? How many running quarterbacks have you seen win Super Bowls? You know what I mean? The amount is worth mentioning when you consider how many have won that win throwing from the pocket, which is what we got in AOC. Just let the man grow. He was a rookie. Richard Silva said, thank you for all the hard work you do for Raider Nation. Richard, I really appreciate that, brother. Much love. Uh, Let me put that up. Chris Robinson said, Dak, hell no. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, Chris. I'm not a Dak fan and you said it wasn't going to happen, but if I if, if it did, I'm not sure I'd be unhappy with that. Well, Doc Raider, your comment's perfect. I I I don't want him. 
But if we got him, I would be excited because he's shown tools. It's not like he's not capable of winning. And what if he gets here and he just works better in our offense? I mean, he's not garbage. He's just not good enough. I feel like he's Derek Carr Black. I'm going to give everyone a moment to laugh at that. <laughs> All right, more me. But he, he is. He is. He, In other words, he teases you with talent, but it seems like it's talent that never comes to fruition. And I hate to say this, but sometimes it feels now, after watching their careers, both Dak and Derek, notice both Ds, as in don't <laughs> sign this guy. But I've noticed that both guys play football almost like they're it's almost it's almost like they know. It's almost like they know they're not good enough, but they don't say anything and they're like wondering if you noticed yet. Have you have you have you noticed I'm not really a starter? No? No you haven't. Oh then I want a new contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hundred and forty seven million for twenty seven years. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, because I'm good. I'm a starter. No, I'm not. <laughs> Dak is an exceptionally handsome number two with a fiance that could just, oh, God damn. <laughs> if, if, if I said that woman was fire and she went up against the sun, the sun would lose. I've seen her, okay? And I hope Mama Bear is not seeing this part of my episode because <laughs> I will be in trouble. Uh, I agree with what Doc said, but Dak isn't worth the amount of draft picture said. Maybe a first-round pick and a third-round pick this year, and maybe a second or third-round pick next year. And even that might be too much. Oh, yeah, no, that's too much for Dak. But at the same time, it's quarterbacks. It's what the league is. Kenny! <laughs> Kenny, it would cost me more to send these all the way over to Britain where you're at than <laughs> what you end up paying for them. <laughs> You better not win, Kenny Blair. I'm just, I'm just kidding, Kenny. Yeah, Dalton Rice is a left guard. I, you know, you know. Honestly, when I was asked about it, I, I, I started thinking like Andy Dalton. I don't know why, and I, I, I fr froze, and I just wanted to make sure I was talking about the wrong person. Seventy-five to sixty. Well, that's not beating the brakes off him. That, that's you know, it's a loss. Uh, don't know if Nix has a strong enough arm. Tanamoku, yes, you do. You do know. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's, he's a game manager. He's Alex Smith. Now, now Spencer Radler got that arm. He, he can throw the deep route, but he's not as accurate as Bo Nix. See, when you have a guy that, you know, this guy's peanut butter and this guy's jelly, but we haven't got any bread, no, just move on. You all got that reference. And it was genius. Come on. Be honest. <laughs> he just, it's just with one you get something and with the other you get something, but you don't get the complete package. That's why, like my constant viewer and heavyweight champion of YouTube, Jim Vanderlyn, he's terrified we're going to overpay and because whatever we pay, you, you know, there's just high bust potential in all these quarterbacks. And so I think we should go with, with a quarterback – if it's someone that's a right, the right fit, if Penix falls that far, I feel like you have to do that because he's got a cannon of an arm. But I have heard Penix's accuracy can be suspect. And I didn't like that his coach said he's the most accurate quarterback I've ever had on our roster. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like the, the first drawback all the pro scouts are talking about is that sometimes he's not very accurate and you're saying he's the most accurate ever. Come on, man. Michael Guerrero, what's up, brother? Welcome to the show. Always there for a Raider Bear. What about the Florida State quarterback Jordan Travis in the round two? Um, Jordan Travis, I've, I've yeah, I've had enough people asking about him now that I've looked at him, and I, I would say this, um, Kenny, everything's there. I just don't want to pay top dollar. So if it's a if it's a second round pick, like if we got an extra second round pick, because the second round pick we have is a high second round pick. So, see, to me, if you go with a quarterback in the first, you, well, not because you're saying a quarterback in the second round. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I, see, to me, you go offensive line first at 13th pick overall. Second pick, I'm thinking defensive back. You know, get a real, a real tough defensive back out of this draft. 
Now, there's a chance that guy would still be there, but it's unlikely. But the the talent at cover corner in this draft is good enough that one of the better cornerbacks in the country will be available. 44th pick overall in the second round, which is a very high second round pick. So I'd like to see us, you know, go in there defensive. Uh, I think we should trade Adams for draft capital. Isn't he getting up in age? Uh, Glenn Medina, I I would say to you that everyone that loves Devontae Adams and thinks that he's untouchable is wrong. Now, do I think we should trade Devontae Adams? I would say no, only because now for the first time in a long time, the Raiders feel like they're a quarterback and a piece. And that's it from having a chance to really win. You have to remember, guys, no team goes into a playoff win and wins a Super Bowl. That's perfect. Every team has problems. Every team has problems. The Chiefs made it one year with a backup left tackle and a backup right tackle going into the Super Bowl. They had problems on their offensive line at the two most important starting positions, and they still almost won a Super Bowl with those guys. They didn't, but they, you know, they gave it their best. They got there. You know, that's pretty damn... That's pretty damn hard to do. Oh, man, this hat. Oh, it's like it's squeezing my head off. <laughs> Still breaking that one in, apparently. Don't forget tonight to the contributor of the most stars tonight will go this incredible item, these AirPods stamped Raider Nation. They're dope, and you don't want to miss out. To the contributor of the most stars tonight. And consider a subscription to Raider Bear Family Page. It's just five bucks a month and you can cancel at any time. But you won't want to because we do some incredible things for charity with that money. And we've been showing you guys that for year after year after year after year. And now we are in year 10 of Raider Bear Live. I don't know how many people you know who have had a podcast that's successful for a decade. This guy. (laughs) Just a little bit of bragging there. So, uh, to be honest with you, though, regardless of his age, he's older for a player. He's been around. He played for the Packers. He played for us for a couple seasons. That's old enough. So, once you get a little bit of wear and tear like that, do you start considering a guy? Honestly, I think you do. Now, I don't think necessarily because I think we're close. I think a piece or two, if we hit a quarterback or if AOC develops, and then, you know, you maybe get another defensive player out of the draft that hits. Maybe you get a right tackle out of the draft that, you know, isn't a star, but he's good enough that he's holding up, and we get to the playoffs, we shake up some trees, and we end up in a Super Bowl. I feel like that's possible now. I really do. And it's all due to the defensive improvement. I want to make that clear. I'm I'm basing all of this on how much better we've gotten defensively. The fact that our running game with the addition of Madison and Zamir White coming into his own. I don't know how many of you noticed that last year, but Zamir White looked to me like he 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 said, Oh, Josh Jacobs is leaving? Give me that torch. You know what I mean? I'm I mean he he's got some attitude. He really does. And it doesn't just come off to me like Raider stuff. You know what I mean? He's not just, you know, buffing his chest out, you know, because he thinks he's supposed to. Zamir White is legit. He 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 is a legit just a tough kid. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to get into a scrap with this guy. He's tough. And he's been through some pain in his life. You know, the Achilles surgeries and, you know, the determination it took him to get to this this point. I would be willing to get, guess that guy is really tough, man. So I think Zamir is going to be nice for us. I think the running game is going to be nice with Madison and Zamir in a one-two punch. I think Devontae Adams is going to be motivated because he's going to know that whether he wins with the Raiders or not, he's going to want to go into these next two years, you know, able to say with his next contract, hey, you still got to pay me the big bucks. I'm still a superstar. You know what I mean? And he's going to want the Raiders to feature him. And Mark Vargas, I like Spencer Rattler. I think that could be the smarter pick just because he can uncork one, but he is also a game manager. So we'll see. Whereas whereas Bo Nix is strictly a game manager. He's going to put the ball there, put the ball there. Now, I mean, I shouldn't insult him that hard. Can he throw a deep ball? Of course. But you can't ask him to throw like five in a game because three of them are going to be off target or potential interceptions, and two of them are going to be, are going to be catchable. And that's not enough when you're throwing deep routes because they can turn into interceptions like that. You know what I mean? So Mark Vargas says Michael Penix is who he would like to have. I like that. Glenn Medina, they're not going to pay trade the 13th pick. I think that they're going to use the 13th pick to pick the best player in the draft. See, Glenn, if you don't think they should go quarterback, and I kind of agree, 
I don't know if I think any of these court quarterbacks warrants that. I don't think we've seen enough from AOC. And the next draft and the next draft after that are going to have quarterbacks in it. But part of winning, especially in this era of basketball, is you do not build dynasties. You build a winner right now. And then if you build the winner and it wins, then you think about dynasty. See, in the past, we've always been taught, I would say as early as like, six, ten years ago, somewhere in that range, we were taught get players, get a quarterback, build a nucleus, and then win for a long time and try to make a Super Bowl run. That's not how teams are built anymore. Teams are built with sparks. You know what I mean? Give me an Odell Beckham Jr. Give me Aaron Donald over there. Put them together. Give me a quarterback, a coach. Let's go. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you're building a race car with a bunch of wild pieces and hoping that it makes a run and it wins. And if it does, then that shows your owner, hey, owner, we showed you we can do it now. Open up the purse. You know, this is the coach and the GM saying, come on, you know, open up the piggy bank. And, you know, we, we need some more guys. We're going to go try to win some more. And they won't justify giving you the money and making those kind of aggressive moves unless you win. But it's got to be now. Owners don't want to hear about, oh, we're building for the future. That never works. Because by the time you get to that future, now your quarterback's too old or he's been injured a couple times, your best defensive player retires, you know, another kid you picked at linebacker didn't pan out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But sooner or later, Glenn Medina, you do have to wager the house and go ch all chips in on a quarterback. You, you just do. Because... Our franchise has been losing for an exceptionally long period of time. Now, all these other franchises have too. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Everyone's losing. You know what I mean? Only one team wins every year. And look at the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers were a freaking joke. They were the losingest franchise in all of professional sports, not just the NFL. And then they got Tom for a season or two and he takes them to a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? But what are they now again? <laughs> You see what I mean? It, it just, this is the NFL now. It's, it's no longer the NFL that we were raised on where you built a nucleus and then you just, you love that nucleus and you could name all the players. Free agency has destroyed that. You know what I mean? Free agency movement and, you know, transfers and things like, it's all, it's ruined it. You know, and it's trickling down to the college level now with transfer portals, you know, and soon you're not going to recognize college teams anymore because you're going to have guys going all over the country saying, I don't want to play here anymore. I want to play over here. I need more minutes, you know. Uh, Doc Raider says, I've said this a couple times before. I think we're going to see a different Aiden O'Connell this year, meaning that my gut, and that's all it is, tells me he's really going to blossom. Now, I've said this about Aiden O'Connell, too. He's a pocket guy to me, and I feel like he's the second coming of Kenny Stabler. Yeah, I said it with my chest. Hot Raiders! Now, in truth, no, he's not that good. Even if he's at his best, whatever he he becomes, it still won't be that good because Kenny Stabler had legs. I don't know how many of you remember that. You know, some of my old school, you know, people who watch my show know that Kenny Stabler could run. Man, he was he was a nasty left lefty, tough. He would put his shoulder into guys. He he he's a legend for a reason. It isn't just because he won. He won and he did it hungover, sometimes drunk, sometimes both. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm kind of, I shouldn't be comparing him to that guy. <coughs> but physically, they're similar. The mustache, the old school throwback style quarterback. I just, I, I like AOC. I think that there's a genuine chance he could really develop for us. Uh, glad I could catch my boy Bear while at work working another double shift, saving up stacks so I can visit Bear and my boy. Ah, what's up, Kay? Kevin! Kahu! Hano! Hano! And his lovely wife, honey. He has a mama bear of his own. You should see her. She's a knockout. Okay, AOC baby all uh, AOC baby all the way. Let's give this kid a chance. Hell yeah. Yeah, you know, honestly, he's here. You know, we picked him. He's not going anywhere. I feel like you give him a shot. But but you do bring in talent. They should bring in a veteran to test him. You know, I was all on board 
with the uh, Russell Wilson thing before he went to the Steelers. I felt like that's a great fit for the Steelers. The Justin Fields thing now is back into play because if anyone thinks that Justin Fields is going to outplay Russell Wilson, you are mistaken. He won't, especially not in camp. Russell Wilson will outplay him. Now, does Justin Fields have everything else? Yes, he's younger. You know, he's faster. He's more durable. You know what I mean? At this point in their careers, Russell Wilson used to be severely super durable, but, you know, the years have caught up to him. (laughs) Who is Derek Carr Black? (laughs) Dak Prescott is Derek Carr Black. Uh, They say in Fisk would make our defense dominant. Um, you know, honestly, I like what we have now. Now, do I want it to get better? Of course. I want him to improve. I want him to still look for players and so on. But at the same time, I'm not, I don't feel desperate like we have in the past. I don't feel like we have to make six more moves. And for, and for example, and I'm glad I remember this, the, um, the linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons, and they're suddenly saying Micah uh, might be available because of contract negotiations and so on. Then I found out that Micah Parsons is starting to wear a little bit thin on uh, Dallas's ownership and staff because of the podcast and the attitude that's come from it. You know, he was already a rich guy. He was already a good looking guy. He's already got women in cars and all that. But now with the podcast, he has an even another level of fame that the Dallas Cowboys are getting kind of sick of. They're, they're implying that it's affecting his football. And so whoever he ends up with after Dallas, I think we're going to see an even better Micah Parsons because I think Micah Parsons fell to the one team that he shouldn't have. And I, and I realize I know I'm taking a shot at Dallas. I mean, don't we all? <laughs> but Dallas is just the most arrogant, hey, everyone, get in the hot tub <laughs> You get money and you get money and you get money kind of roster that I've ever seen in my life. And I I just don't see how a a young player can go to Dallas and ever really become what they're supposed to because they're told that they already are before they've even, you know, ran a play. You know what I mean? And I just feel like I feel like Dallas and Jerry Jones coddling of Micah Parsons has stunted his growth. And when you consider the numbers he's put up and how incredibly monstrous he's looked at times, to to accept that I'm saying they actually stunted his growth is, you know, the guy would have been Thanos if they had just left him alone and made him hungry, you know what I mean? And instead, they just kept neutering his hunger at every level, you know what I mean? Giving him money, telling him he's already the man, okaying his podcast, you know, you're just neutering him over and over again. Tony Romo 2.0. <laughs> that number four, if it's a jinx, then our guy AOC is in trouble. I hated that they gave him De- uh, Derek Carr's number. I felt like they did that kind of as a parting shot to Derek Carr, and I just thought it was petty. It read Mark Davis all over it. Because you know AP didn't do it. Josh McDaniels was already out the door. I think, <laughs> I think Mark Davis basically said, you know what, let's send one more little shot to Derek Carr and let him know that he ain't nobody. We're not even going to retire his jersey here in our raft, our <laughs> rafters, so to speak. Glenn Medina, Derek Carr is better than Dak, if you ask me. I, I, I do think that. And that's not saying a lot about, about, about Dak. You know what I mean? Dak was just a little bit more of a risk taker than Derek was. And unfortunately, Derek's style of play showed why Dak should have been more like Derek. Uh, as far as players on the O-line, I like the kid from Penn State. Um, they all have these last names this year. Chihuahua, Sasa, or something like that. I can't say it right now. And I apologize. My computer was down but just before the show, so my list of offensive linemen I love is, is down right now. But I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth. Uh, Ramiro uh, Cash Flow Castro, tomorrow I will talk about that a little bit more in depth. Because I do think that the 13th pick is going to be an offensive lineman. I don't think we're going to move up. I do think the hysteria for quarterbacks is going to be as big um, as the scouts are saying. Now, I don't think that it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know, first five picks are going to be quarterbacks. That's nonsense. Even if teams trade up, they're not all going to pick these quarterbacks. I just don't I don't see that. I don't see that. That's just a lot of hype. Uh, um Caleb Williams will go one. Drake May will probably go two. 
to Washington. Although I think the kid in Washington reminds me of our situation with AOC. They're not giving the kid in Washington an opportunity to, to become something. I, I can't remember his name, so I'm being kind of disrespectful in that way by hyping him, and I can't remember his name. But just mark my words, the guy who started for Washington last year, okay, brunette-haired kid, good-looking, tough, good build, I'm actually hoping that Washington does go after Drake May and makes this guy look expendable, and he's probably going to want to trade because I don't think he's a number two. I really don't. I think if you gave that kid some time, he would be nice. Bear, love your show, but you're <laughs> you're wrong as f. Dak is worth two seconds tops. Well, okay, you know, honestly, Dirty Eric, I would say to you, if it was for a couple of second round picks, I'd be interested. I would still make him fight for the job, and I wouldn't give it to him outright. So if you brought in Dak and AOC outplayed him, then damn it, Dak's sitting. You know, I mean, and you guys know how this NFL is. His agent would go crazy. You can't make Dak look like a two. Because the moment you start treating a guy like he's a two, he is a two. You know what I mean? That's why Justin Fields is already, you know, quietly trying to get the hell out of uh, Pittsburgh. He didn't know they were going to do this thing with Russell. Remember, they had picked up Russell. Then you go and get Justin Fields. Why? And, and I realize it's competition and all this other stuff. You want to win now and not necessarily make Justin be the guy right now. But Justin wants to be the guy right now. See, as far as Justin's concerned, you just embarrassed him a little bit. You doxed him a little bit. You know, put his name out in the street and said, you know, eh, Russell Wilson probably going to outplay you this year. I don't like that. I, I, just, I don't like that. If, if Justin Fields comes in and outplays Russell Wilson, you think they're going to give him the job? I don't. I don't. I think they look at Justin Fields as a long-term option, and Russell Wilson is right now, in case they don't like what they see in camp from Justin Fields. They put a feeler out there on him. That's why Justin's already, I, I, I would argue the Steelers are going to shop him if they aren't already quietly doing it right now, just to see what people would, would say. Yeah, I'll give you a, a first, a third, and a seven, you know, with something they have next year, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be this year. You know, They're not going to move him this year. But, well, well, it's possible. You know, do you use Justin in a move-up move? You know, maybe. Maybe maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers go ultra-aggressive. Let's just say it. Maybe they go ultra-aggressive. They want someone in the top five. And they offer up Justin Fields in a pick. And that team says, okay, you know, maybe Washington. You know, maybe the the, I mean... If if Belichick were still in New England, I would say he pulled the, the he would pull the trigger on that. He would rather a veteran that's at least someone he's seen some tape of and can work with, as opposed to taking a mystery in Michael Penix out of the draft. I think he would rather a guy like Justin Fields trade down, get a a, a load of picks, and give someone else that pick at number three. Probably us. <laughs> It does pay for it. I'm telling you, the Justin Fields thing was in place. I, I still haven't been able to get a hold of enough people that I know around football to tell me what happened. But Justin Fields was supposed to be a Raider. Something went wrong. I, I don't know what. I don't know if, if, if our staff that we brought over from Chicago just quietly, you know, went to our, our, our you know, front office and said, guys, you know, he's not the guy. We worked with him intimately. He ain't the guy. You know, we can't say that out loud. You know, you can torpedo a guy's career and his potential for contracts moving forward and blah, blah, blah. And, and I believe that. You should you should honor that. You know what I mean? You really should. I mean, for example, if the Ravens know that Odell Beckham Jr. is really, really shot and that the Dolphins shouldn't take a shot at him, they're not going to tell the Dolphins that. You know what I mean? Why would you jack with the guy's career? If he can go there and get the Dolphins, give him a new career, and then he gets there and he says, oh, my Achilles is torn. He didn't play a single game and gets $16 million of, of whatever the contract was worth as guarantees. Hey, you know, more power to him. I, I, never, I, never, I never support the teams. The, the teams are already billionaires. And they have all its money. Let the teams make the players make money wherever they can. 
Glenn Medina, we could use another linebacker, absolutely. But we don't need a star. We've already got guys that can play. I, I, I think we just need another solid guy. Maybe Penix Coach is his agent, too, coming out with the accuracy statement. It certainly seemed that way. Uh, I haven't seen you post much tonight, Lucky. If it was my fault, my bad. Tape don't lie. Penix dropping dimes all over the place in the tight windows like a boss the past two years. This is just Raider subterfuge. Big words on my guy, Lucky Pace. <laughs> this is just subterfuge. Look at him. He's good looking and got the words. Tactics to scare everyone off of Penix so we can get him. Well, and we, we saw that too, Lucky, when, when uh, AP a couple weeks ago, roughly about a month ago, said that he couldn't believe that J.J. McCarthy wasn't a top three pick. You know what I mean? That's just all, you know, again, subterfuge. Dun, dun, dun. I wish I could make the screen like come in and out real intensely on that one. <laughs> but yeah, you know, this could be more of that, but We'll see. I, I, I just I I just I have to think that AP wouldn't be playing poker like this unless he was gonna go for a quarterback. Otherwise, why are you playing poker like this, trying to make teams make moves and trying to distort other teams from what might might happen and then you pick Terry and Arnold, you know, a defensive back? You know, that wouldn't really make much sense to try to start all this subterfuge and then you go with a DB. I don't know. I don't know if that's the way we're gonna go. I think we're I think we are gonna go quarterback. I just I just don't know who they're going to go with because I think they may just sit at 13 and take who's best to them. All right. Alexa, resume! <laughs> she likes when I yell at her, see? <sighs> All right, that's my show. Much love. Shout out to our Armed Forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Guard, Space Force for all you do. The energy and love of this show is dedicated to your sacrifice. Active and veteran, much love. Last bids in now for the Raider earbuds. I will announce the winner shortly after the show, probably tomorrow. We got to go in back into the show, watch the show, see who tallied the most, the most stars, and then, then we will let you know who that winner is of these wonderful <laughs> they are actually pretty good I, I i do have a pair you know for what that's worth i'm not gonna tell you they're like you know, iphone earbuds they're not like that good because they're not heavy you know what i mean they're real light and i, I don't know i kind of like that most people like like you know electronic stuff to be heavy because yeah, people see heavy as expensive or something but i'm telling you they work really good and they have that real good ear canceling effect to them Alexa, stop. I have to tell her to stop because I don't know what she's going to play next and it'll be some fruity song. So, <laughs> All right, that's my show. Much love and I will see you same time, same channel tomorrow night. Much love, Raider Bear, Raider Bear, Family Page, Mama Bear, Little Cub, out and stuff. That actually sounds